x 64 dbg has a scripting feature, and I think we should use this more often. So it's not only useful to document and share unpacking scripts, it's also useful during analysis. So if you are at a certain, let's say you have a shell code that's called with certain parameters, you don't want to repeat the steps again to get to the first, to the start of the shell code or to a particular state in the program that you're currently analyzing. So just write your script until you are at this state in the program. And then if you misstep or you need to repeat an analysis at a certain point, you just run your script and you're there. So that's quite useful. Let's now see how it works on a simple example. If you want to try this yourself, please check the link in the video description below for the sample and also for the unpacking script. We have a sample here with, with several unpacking stages. Firstly, we have the original sample. This is a .NET sample. It has some resources. It has a large array. Both are interesting if you want to know exactly how the unpacking stuff works. And it's also obfuscated with smart assembly. So this will unpack the first stage with simple XOR algorithm. And this is called ZZZ. It's also .NET. This one unpacks another .NET sample named a project. And a project unpacks a compressed payload. And it doesn't only unpack that, it actually injects it. With run PE or process hollowing. So here is the compressed payload and where is it injected to into its own child process so i'm just writing here into self oh, i know my writing isn't the best into self and last but not least this is decompressed And we have a stealer named Pony. Let's first see how far Mel Unpack gets with this sample. So I'm choosing a timeout of 3000. That's a common value that works for me. And a slash exe with the path to our sample. So we get some things unpacked here. And this does not contain the final payload though. Okay, so it's two times the ZZZ, it's one time a project. And this, um, ZZZ is the second unpacking stage. A project is the third. So, and I'm not going to go into detail of the analysis for all of these files here because I actually want to concentrate on the scripting part. So I'm just going to quickly explain how the unpacking stuff works. And when you go into uh, this location here, you can see there is a native API calls get thread context, anti unmap view of section. Then there are ABI calls which are obfuscated. So let's look into these, what they mean. Usually the obfuscated ones are the ones that are the interesting ones. So, and we see write pr and this is concatenated with this. That's right, process memory. So other APIs that follow our set thread context 
and wow 64 set thread contacts and resume thread so this is very typical for process hollowing if you look at the process injection graph here um, this is the way this follows so it creates a process and then it will do a anti unmap your section write process memory and then set thread context resume thread so it follows this path that is also called run pe can unpack it here uh, write process memory does have a buffer with the data that is written to the final process you can also use virtual alloc eggs because usually at some point you allocate a buffer where the payload is then written to. And so both of these wouldn't be fine. However, in this case, I'm going to use write process memory. So that means uh, my unpack does not unpack all of the stages. So we are going to try to unpack this now manually. And then we repeat this by writing a script. We are now at the system breakpoint and this is a .NET file. So we will not run until the entry point. Instead, we will directly set our breakpoint to write process memory. We press CTRLG. We go to this location, press F2, and now we just try to run there. This will take a little bit of time. Now the buffer that contains the data that shall be written to a process is now here in the third argument. Let's follow this in dump. And here we can see another file. When you scroll down a little bit, you see it's UPX packed. So this is something we can now dump and we actually already skipped the first two unpacking stages by placing our breakpoint here. So before we forget what we did here to get to this point, let's already start taking notes. Let's create a new file here where we write our unpacking script to. First thing that's a good idea to do is to clear breakpoints. We set our breakpoint on write process memory. We run to this breakpoint, clear it. And uh, now we want to know the address where the payload is saved. So when you look into this here, this third argument where the buffer is, that is ESP plus C. You can write ESP, but we can also say current stack pointer CSP, so it works regardless of the bitness of the file. Now the question is, when we want to dump this, we also actually need to know the size of that. We don't know the size of that, so the current size that is provided for this buffer here is 1000, and that's too small. I'm guessing, I didn't verify this, but I'm guessing it writes each section separately into the target process. However, in this buffer here, the file is already completely there. So what we can do now is just dump starting from this address here until the end of the memory page. So let's calculate a little bit around to... Uh, determine the size. So first I'm calculating the end of the page. What does this do? We can test this mem.base 
just we don't have the payload variable here. Let's copy this address instead. Copy address. And what we get now is this address. If you look into the memory map, let's follow in memory map. That's the start of our page here. And we want to know the end of the page, which would be 2AB2000. So to achieve that, we add the size of this memory page. And that is something we do here. So if we have membase of this, plus mem size of our current address, this is now the end of the page, 2AB2000 here. To get the size, we now subtract the payload address from the page end. First save this in a new variable and then subtract the payload address. And now we should have the actual size until the end of the memory page. The command to save this dump is called save data. And we provide a file name, payload, and the size. So this will dump at this address with this size in a temporary file called dump.tmp. Let's save this script and let's see if it works. So first we restart this, we go to script, we go to load script open and our script is here. And now if we press the space bar, we can run until we are at the point where we save the data. Let's do this. And there's an error in the script. Let's fix this quickly. Let's restart this. Reload the script. Press spacebar. And the script is finished. And now you see here written to dump.tmp. That's in the current directory. So we are currently in this directory here. Here's our dump. When we look at this. Let's just take a quick look at the strings here. That's the file. So there's the .NET assemblies are also part of this file. However, the actual file is quite small. We have just dumped way too much. It doesn't hurt though. Um, we are just going to continue because this is this file right here. When you look at the hex editor, is still packed with UPX. Now we can just run upx.exe minus d on this, but since we wanted to write a script that uh, goes until it's fully unpacked, let's also do the same for upx. First thing we do is we now load our new newly dumped file. Just gonna clear any breakpoints that might still be there. We will run. This will run until the entry point. 
and we will use this common technique to unpack UPX where you place a breakpoint on the stack after the first step. So let's, let's actually restart this and let's reload our script. And now if we, if we execute the script, we should actually load our dump file. So let's follow this in this assembler and we are at the entry point of UPX now. So here's the push AD instruction. The common way to unpack UPX is you step over this, you follow ESP and dump and now place a breakpoint on this address. Hardware access byte, let's run. And now we are almost where the tail jump is to the original NT point. So we just need to run until we are there. And if we step one more time, we are at the entry point and we have our file unpacked in memory. And that's what we're gonna repeat here as well in the script. So we ran to the entry point, we step one time, we place the hardware breakpoint on read for one byte on uh, the stack pointer. We run until we hit our hardware breakpoint. Then we are gonna remove this again. And now we are, let's actually repeat this. Let's open our original file. Open this. reload the script and run it. Script finished. Following this assembler. So we want to find this location here. And to find this, we are just going to find the next jump instruction, which starts with E9. So if we now say find E9 and we need to tell it where to start searching. So we just say at the current instruction pointer, find E9. The result is 41D639, which is this address. So this is gonna work and we will use this in our script as well. So find current instruction pointer E9 from until we are at the result address. Then we step one more time and then we open Scylla for dumping. So that should do it. Let's open the original sample again. Let's now reload the script and I press spacebar. So we have Scylla open for dump.tmp. We have the original entry point here. Let's now do auto search and get imports, we get our imports, we dump, uh, unpacked, and we fix the dump. So we finally fix the dump. Now let's take a look at it. Non-fixed dump is here, the fixed dump is here. And if we just 
check the strings, we check those, we see this is a stealer. We see very common strings for a stealer inside. And it definitely is unpagged. In the UPX file, those strings would not be visible. And if we check for the imports, they are now in the import table. So we successfully unpacked this. We wrote a script for x64 dbg or 32 dbg. And it's actually easier than I initially thought. If you want to learn malware analysis from the ground up, please check the link in the video description below. It contains a coupon link to my Udemy course for beginners.